Hey, coaches, how's it going? Uh, this is Coach T. Got a, a great guest on today. It's uh, Brad Van Horn. He is the offensive coordinator at Charlotte Independence. They, they like to sling the ball around a little bit. He's a big, big advocate of four verticals. Um, like I know most of us are in our offenses and everybody kind of has their own way to run it. There's a million ways to run it and tag it, but they do a really good job of it and they're really efficient at it. So he's going to kind of explain us how, explain to us how they run poor verts at Charlotte Independence and more specifically how they like to do it out of three by one because uh, I know a lot of you coaches kind of asked me you know, Coach, how do you run six, four verts out of uh, out of three by one? I started thinking, I was like, we really don't do it that much, which we want to start doing a lot more of this year. So um, excited to have Brad on. Uh, one of the mo more brighter offensive minds that I've been around. Uh, we started way back in 2012 coaching JV together at Richlands High School, just slinging the rock around. So, um, Brad, we're uh, excited to learn from you, and uh, I'll let you take it from there. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate you having me on. Um, yeah, uh, things have changed a little bit, but like Coach said, we go way back. Um, you know, I, I'm like a lot of you guys, you know, huge Kenny Powers fan, and I think he has a quote in one of his shows, you know, um, they're at the dealership, and, and they're trying to burn one down the middle. <laughs> and somebody said, uh, no bunting. <laughs> and my man was like, nobody's trying to bunt. Well, the reason I bring that up is because uh, when we talk about our passing game, you know, we, we, we don't like bunting. We, we like to be able to go deep. Um, and um, so that, that's just kind of our philosophy. We love to hit home runs. Um, and you'll kind of see the way some teams play us on film. They, they like to take that away and make us throw it short. Um, just talk briefly about trips, you know, why trips versus anything else. You know, if the defense is balanced, we tend to be, want to be unbalanced, whether, you know, it's a 4-3, four, 3-4, three, three, four, straight down the middle, right? If they're balanced, if they're 50% on half and half, well, we want to be, you know, unbalanced on offense. Um, <clears throat> there's some unique reads that, that come with trips. You know, usually when you're in spread, you know, the old school uh, triple option, you know, Georgia Southern under center, four deep. Um, where you just you, – everybody hits the seam. Um, your outside guy's outside release, and you read the one high safety. Well, um, out of trips, it changes a little bit. So, without boring you guys and getting too much in, into the, you know, the terms, because this thing could hit several different ways. When we started exploring um, four verts, um, we wanted to bring our triple option approach, which we don't run anymore, but we wanted to bring that approach to the passing game. We wanted to be able to call the same pass play five times in a row and hit five different receivers. Um, and, you know, if you ask any of our receivers, they're in pretty good shape because we run a whole lot of six. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing that we have to know, there's several things going down right here. This is actually a um, – and let me see if I can get to edit mode. This is a one-high look, right? So anytime we get a one-high look, our slots know that they are never sitting it down regardless. We want to put stress on this one-high safety. Um, same thing uh, at the, as you read out of spread, old school – Right, look them one way, come the other. Now, one thing I would advise you guys to do is a lot of times in trips, the two comes open a lot, right? If, if, you, if you can ideally put it in any situation, you would want your quarterback to stare down that too so we can move that free safety off the hash, right? Because uh, let, let's be honest, I mean, this is our three, but in the air raid, um, this is probably your why. Um, this is your money, man, right? This is the guy that you want to get the ball to. Um, now, Coach, Stray, or Coach um, Townsend mentioned something about tags. Um, one thing that we like to do, you know, is we like to tag drag on the backside if we think we might be getting man. What this allows, how, how this changes the game is, and this is not anything new or not anything that I invented. Uh, we got this from Patrick Taylor, so I'd be remiss if I sat here and tried to take credit for it. Um, he, he calls it engineering, is, is he calls it the engineered air raid. And um, so, you know, what we have to do is, as we come to the line, now you see two areas on the field that are vacated. The threes hash or the wise hash and the outside of the numbers that the Z previously occupied. So what's going to happen is we're going to go under Sam over Mike, right, trying to get to our hash. As we get here, our three is reading this corner. If the corner trails with the Z, we know it's man-to-man, -man and, and our three is going to completely across the field. 
Now, at the same time, if our quarterback gets man or gets blitz or pressure from any reason, if he realizes it's man, if he diagnoses it's man, he knows he needs to go to the drag immediately. Um, unless, you know, our three just wins, our stud wins. But it works out because we always read it inside out, right? We go three, two, one. Well, what we're getting if it's man is, and as long as there's no blitz, we're getting natural clear outs, right? Because the Sam or the safety's going to run with the two, corner's going to run with the X, um, the Sam's going to run with the three, and then we're going to have the Z dragon across being trailed by a shallow corner. Um, so that, that's just kind of real basic general way we do it. Um, if we wanted to, um, you know, if there were, if it was a too high look, oh shoot, sorry, excuse me. Excuse me. If it was a too high look, um, what we would do is we would anticipate curling it, right? So now that it's too high, we know that we can't get over the top. Um, and so our curl windows, we're looking to curl at the next, between the next two backers inside. So for the three, he's trying to get under Sam over Mike, right? And then his curl window is between these two backers. So depending on what that Mike does, He's going to sit it right there. Now, the two's curl window for us and our offense is between the next backers inside. So what he's going to do is he's going to try to push up, maybe over, and then he's got to curl between these two backers, right? Now, again, this is a static picture. Nothing's changing. In a real game, these guys are going to be flowing, which is going to make that window up, so he's not going to quite come in as much. This backer's probably going to expand because he's going to open up to the field, which is going to open this window up. It's going to be closer to over the ball. only thing that can happen is if the backside wheel squeezes it off, now we've got to go into this next window, right? Rule number one, if you can't see the quarterback, he can't see you. So that, that's one of the things that we're trying to accomplish. And then always in too high, <clears throat> when we get to the line, the first thing our quarterback does, right, is he identifies the weak side safety. And what I mean by that is the safety to the single receiver, right? If this safety is cheated out over here, if they're trying to double team, if it's a cover two, if it's wide, you know, we might be thinking pipe shot. And so for us, all that is is just get skinny down the middle and score. Um, if the safety is cheated to the trips because we're burning them over here, or it's a one look, we, if we want to take our one-on-one -on -one shot versus the corner, all right? And we'll kind of talk about that. Um, going into the clips right now. So, I apologize for some of the filming. This was the first game of the year, um, and our filmer was getting those HD highlights, so he was on the Zoom really hard. Um, but right here, we got late, we got a late jump. Um, North Mac was playing kind of an unconventional defense, and I'm not going to talk to you too much about the defenses or bore you with that stuff. But again, when I said no bunting, I meant it. Um, you know, we have a quarterback that's got a cannon, a bazooka. He's coming back. Now, notice I didn't say a sniper, um, but I said a bazooka. And so when he lets that thing go, I mean, we're out running defenses. Um, and so, and I realize not everybody's got that. So I'm, I'm not trying to tell you to put a square peg into a round hole. Um, but whatever benefits your kids, um, you know, obviously try to play to their strengths. Because of that, we see a lot of defenses trying to keep everything in front. Um, so let's see if we get – all right, so here we go. We got four deep. Um, I can probably go ahead and tell you that I can – that it's Z-drag because how tight choked down our receiver is. But we're looking at this guy right here, pre-snap, right? Pre-snap, he's got outside leverage. Um, so it may be man, maybe not. But based on what we're seeing over here, it looks like it's zone. Um, we're going to identify this uh, safety right here. We don't have the outside fade. Like I just said, we got the drag. But if he's cheating, it's probably going to tell us that the three is going to get across his face. Um, so here we go, typical open cross plant. Now I know the pocket breaks down right here. But there's our two, the two and trips running down the hash. Landmarks are very important. All right, if you check out my three right here, he realizes at this point in time he cannot beat that guy deep. The guy has a 15-yard head stop. I don't or head head start. I don't care if he runs a 4-4 Usain Bolt, 4-2, whatever. Um, he's not going to get past him. So he, you can see right here, our three is looking to curl right now in this window. Again, he knows he can't drag across. Why? Because the corner sat, because of zone. So the three sits, he's curled up in the window. He's wide open. We could have went to the three. And then we give our X's and our Z's option routes on the outside. He, you see the X is working the comeback to the sideline. He can't get over the top either. There's probably cover four. And then the safety gets out of place. 
not reinventing the wheel. It's just all about knowing where to go with the football. It takes a lot of time, and the reason is is because this is typically – this is like a run and shoot, right? You have multiple things that can happen, and everybody's got to be on the same page. Um, and here in a minute, I'll kind of tell you how we do that. Um, again, right here, we go four deep. Um, out of trips, old school four deep. Really, there's no safety in the field. We could have took our one-on-one -on -one shot here. Um, this is a really unconventional defense. They've, they've kind of run in the defensive version of a sniffer. I don't know what this Mike Bagger's trying to do because there's no way he's going to be able to get 50 yards downfield. I mean, if you're going to get in an odd front, just line up in a nose guard. I mean, if you want to be in a 5-2, that's cool. But anyway, so you see up top it's man. Um, because our three right here understands it's man, you see how his hips are turned? He's going to kind of push up to the outside. Why? To open up this area of the field he's trying to get it to. And, he, and the ball land. he's right there on the hash. He's right where he's landmark, where he needs to be. Remember, we're going under Sam over Mike. There is no Sam um, because they're in some kind of 4-3 funkies thing. Um, but he stays a little more vertical than a traditional route. But then once he breaks, it's on like Donkey Kong. And we could have went with our single side down here as well. You see up top running the, running the curl, just reading it. But this is the first play of the game. You see it up there on the, on the thing, play number one. Um, you know, huge. Same thing. All right, now we got X drag. He's dragging. We weren't very good at hitting the drags. That's one of the things that we need to, to work on this offseason or this season. You know, usually when you um when, when you have a guy that can throw 60-yard bombs, you know, the drag might be a little lower on his repertoire. So that's one of the things that we're working on and trying to build up that flexibility. Um, and just being able to identify going back and forth between man and zone. Um, you know, this kind of looks like – I mean, this is definitely a zone because you can see he's, he's looking at the quarterback. Um, what I would say about this cover two look, when we're, when we're getting cover two, and I'm assuming that's what this is, um, you know, we're probably going to hit the two. Who's got the most cushion? He's going to push up like he's going deep. He's going to get to about 14, and then he's going to curl it, right? Because he's, he's naturally got cushion. Um, the outside backer's on number three, corner's on number – on the um, Z. And we'll talk about some things that we can do to cover two here in a minute um, as well. And again, we're, we're simplifying these reads for the quarterback. His reads are one, two, three. He's reading one side of the field. We're not full field reading unless he gets pre-snapped. Man, but look right here. And this is what I was talking about. I mean, the drag comes open all the time, but again, if we got the opportunity, we'd rather they're not bunt. We'd rather throw tutties. Um, and so this was the game. Um, I think our quarterback um, became the 20th quarterback in Mecklenburg ha County history to throw six touchdowns in a game. Um, and my man right here um, became the 20th receiver um, for the best single game performance in uh, Mecklenburg County history against, uh, uh, against Hopewell in that game right there. That's definitely labeled wrong. I apologize. All right, so we got Z-drag right here. Kind of, We're just pre-snapping. We're kind of looking at what we got. Another thing that you can do for cover two that we'll start doing, it, and, and we just started doing it recently. Um, this film's from about two years ago. Um, but if you're getting two, read two, any of that good stuff, tag your number two on a five-yard out. Speed cut, whatever you want. All right, what's going to happen is this corner is going to jump it, and then you just got to be able to drill this in the fade ball window, right? The only thing that can happen, the only thing that can happen is you can get a switch. This obviously isn't true cover two. This is kind of like a three safety look because they knew we were liking to throw the ball. But if this guy's not here, say he's a backer down here, then at that point all you would have to do is read your safety because if he comes flying out to cover this cover two shot, the three is going to be wide open down the pipe, right? If he stays on the hash, then the cover two hole is going to be open in the window. Um, so there, there's always an answer for something that you can do. And, again, it's really easy. Get the ball to your money guy. Right here, we, what we have is what's called a pipe shot. You see how wide these safeties are? You could drive a Mack truck down this alley. So because of that, we know that this middle linebacker can't sit here and guard us vertically, right? So we know once we clear that window, he's in trouble. Um, and, you know, when you have a 6'4 quarterback, um, you know, it makes things a little bit easier. But – Again, he threw for six touchdowns this game, and that receiver um, caught four of them. 
um, who's now playing as, at Elizabeth City. Um, okay. Sorry. Our um, huddle automatic starts a little off. But here we go. All right, we got four deep. Again, when we come to the line, we're telling our quarterback, identify the weak side safety, right? That's the whole goal is we want to identify the weak side safety. And so the weak side safety is down here. We probably could take our one-on-one -on -one shot, but he's a little bit off, so it doesn't look like a true cover two. Could be cover two, could be cover four, could be re two. We don't know. Um, the three, when he comes line, is identifying the space between. He realizes the pipe shot's probably off the table, so he's looking. He's going to probably curl right in between these two backers, right? If the two ends up curling, he's going to curl in between this backer and that backer. So you see initially here, we got a curl there, curl there, and this guy's working to curl on the outside. Again, got to coach up our guys better. Got to throw the drag. Got to be able to throw the drag. But, you know, no bunting, right? Um, so that was just scramble drill, and that happened a lot. Um, I'm not going to sit here and try to say, like, I'm this great coach because I'm not. Um, you know, just get the ball to your athletes and let them make plays. This right here is out of spread. I know we're, we're, we're talking mainly out of trips, but out of spread right here, we know that we've got a one-high look. Um, they loved their game plan. They were going to blitz away from our backer every time. Um, and so this is one of those where, you know, this is Garinger. They're going to keep everything in front. So right here at this point, our slots know that they're not sitting down. Why? Because it's one high. So we're going to make him choose. So both slots are going deep. The outside guys are probably curling. And so we just hit the comeback and then, you know, get the ball to your playmakers. <clears throat> Here's trips right here. Four deep. Again, we come to the line. You see how far out this safety's cheated? I mean, here's the ball. He's way outside. He's almost on the number. So we know we're not going the solo shot, the one-on-one. -on -one. Pipe shot may be open depending on what this guy does. But, again, um, you know, it, it's probably going to be the two. Um, and so pre-snap right here, we're reading to sit. But if this guy ends up weaving to the middle of the field, we're going to treat it like one high. Um, and so, okay. We also have a tag right here. We have X, Z, swap. And so what that means is all it is is our X and two are switching responsibilities. Our X is going to push up. I'd like for him to be a little bit wider, but his rules alignment are he's splitting the hash and the numbers when the ball's on the opposite side of the field. Um, but what's going to happen is he's going to push up to 10. He's going to hit the flat or the post. It's going to be super skinny. And because we're running shooting this, right, he has the option to set it down once he runs it. All right, the two's going to run the wheel and replace and take the X's responsibility. Um, and so let's kind of see what happens. Three's the same. We throw to the X. Underthrown, I mean, if my man with the bazooka would have launched it over here, you know, it would have definitely been a touchdown. But we have to settle for the completion. Um, so, again, that's just a sample of how easy the tag is. One, one, one touch, <clears throat> more on the baseball system. I have a part of my body that represents everybody on the offensive field with the exception of the linemen. Um, and so I can touch one body part, give one signal, and, and we're good. We're in a completely different look. Um, I watch, you know, if, if you watch Coach Townsend's video yesterday with Coach Silas, he talked about being multiple um, and everything you do as far as um, formations and things like that. Um, this is the exact same thing. We're running one play, um, but to the defense, it looks like thousands of plays, right, um, with, just, with just the touch of a hand. Um, so again, right here, we could probably take our one-on-one -on -one shot. Why? Because look at this safety. You see how far he's cheating, right? We could definitely take this one-on-one. -on -one. Now, again, to be able to win on the one, to win the one-on-one, -on -one, you got to have some dudes, right? Our guys got to be better than their guys. So it's not always foolproof, um, but on paper, it looks pretty good. Now, blitzes, right? My quarterback messes up right here. This is, this is cover four. Hickory Ridge is a 3-4. They're bringing the dog off the edge. All right, we always want to throw into the blitz. Right now, because we're reading three, two, one, if we don't take the solo side pre-snap, which we could have, if we're going here, it's, it's a pre-snap look. Um, but because the guy blitzes off the edge, we need – and we talk about this with our quarterback's footwork. He can cross over. Um, we teach rocker steps. Um, which is what you see with that left foot moving. 
Um, you see a lot of quarterbacks that will have staggered stances, and I'm all about staggered stances. I love it. The problem for us with the staggered stance is if his feet are staggered, we can't get him to step down into the run game for our zone read. Um, so we allow them to cheat. Kind of got that from Anthony Boone. Um, used to play at Duke. Um, they, they take that rocker step, and <clears throat> then they open cross plant. Now, anytime we want to convert to a one step, we'll do is what we call a gather step, and he won't cross over, and then this foot will come back. So it's, it's like a shuffle. Um, but we have to throw the ball right here right now. Um, for the most part, teams don't blitz us a lot. Because of that simple fact, you know, you look at Brady, you look at Manning, you got to replace the blitz with a throw. Have to, and we don't do a good job of that here. Um, you know, does it work out? Yes, but we got to be able to throw right there in that cover two window. Here we go. <clears throat> I really like this clip. This is cover zero. This is Porter Ridge. This was a big win for us last year. Um, definitely an upset. Um, but you see cover zero across the board. Um, everybody's down, pressed up. Um, we had our dude one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and here's where our quarterback, he takes a rocker step, but he realizes zero. So you'll see he gets a quick three. It's, it's not his typical three-step drop. He gets a quick three, and boom, gets the ball out. And it's a touchdown. Now, if it, now if it's one high, anything like that, you know, it's not right here. But quarterbacks really got to move that one high safety with his eyes because he knows where he wants to go. Defense doesn't know where we're going with the ball. We do. Um, so, you know, cover zero, cover four, cover two, cover one. It doesn't matter what they're in. We've got a plan for it. Right here, you go cover zero. They're going to be bringing some heat. Yep, cover zero. And then we just busted and got out. Cover two, right? Who's got the natural cushion? It's probably going to be the two right here. Um, now, if this guy flies out, he might have to slide into that window. Again, if you can't see the quarterback, he can't see you. And we got swapped out here again. So what you'll see is inside release, get to our post, and then our, our, our two's running a wheel. Three responsibilities say the same. Now, the one thing I don't like about this, and I'm showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly, is our receiver right here does not get outside of the corner. Because of that, the corner is allowed to play zone and look at the quarterback at the same time, which is not a good look for us. Luckily, you know, I think we trapped it. They gave us the credit for completion. Now, one thing we haven't talked about, one thing that can give you problems against this offense is this cat right here. If this guy, whoever's on number two, can match him vertically with his speed, you're going to have some problems. All right? So if it's man, just like anything else, and I'll try to give you an example right here. If it's man, we want to run from it. So if he goes to curl because it's too high, he's obviously not right here. But if he went to curl and this guy's on him, he's going to turn this into a dig, right? And hopefully we hit him in the window. Um, but we never want to set. But year one, that gave us a lot of problems as we, we had guys that could match us vertically. We had outside backers that were faster than our slots. Um, and that's obviously not a good look. But real quick, we're going three, two, three, two, one, inside out right. And we catch him one-on-one. -on -one. So right here, the backers matched vertically. And we're good. Um, you know, quarterback drops it in. And they gave us the touchdown. Same thing. We're coming up four deep. It's trips. We're identifying the, the safety opposite. He's kind of out. Look at that pipe, baby. Look at that pipe. Well, we should be going right down the middle. Let's see what happens post-snap. Does pipe stay wide? Absolutely. Uh. And, and so, you know, that, that's the thing. Here's the Sam. Rules are always under Sam. I don't know if he gets under Sam. He might go over him. He went under Sam. Here's the Mike. He's trying to get over Mike. We know Mike can't hang with us vertically. And then that ball drops in beautifully. And, and it's just like poetry in motion. A little scramble drill. Um, you know, we're not, we're not here to see the scrambles. Here we go. We got Z drag. He's coming flat, which tells this guy he can, he's got the hole from this hash 
to the sideline to work with. We just expanded his zone, right? It's, it's all about zones. We're trying to stay in zones. Uh, oh, we got to the drag. Amazing. Let's go. So we throw the drag. Everybody carries over here. You see his match. You see how there's nobody in the flats. Easy throw. Not an easy completion because we're playing patty cake, but we'll take it. Short dink and dunk, right? Being able, being able to get down the field. Um, this can't be right. Oh no, sorry, RPO. I know that was labeled wrong. Um, okay, here we go. Four deep. This guy's almost in the. We got a lot of room over here. If we can hold that safety, I like our one-on-one -on -one odds over here. And really, I don't really like this. Really, he should be aiming to get more more vertical. But it looks like it, it's a cover one or cover 12 type look. And he realizes he's got the backer matched up on him. And it becomes – all this is doing is it's turned into scramble drill. Quarterback creating with the Brett Favre backwards pitch. Um, and, and it's pretty basic. Um, you know, again, not trying to um, – bore you guys but look we got one high as soon as we come the line our slots know they are not setting it down no matter what this is kind of tricky though because this safety see how far cheated back he is that might present some problems for this guy right here uh, let's kind of see how it plays out and then that's what we were talking about this is exactly what we were talking about um remember we were talking about if they're in man right the i mean there, there's some pretty athletic cats in charlotte um, and this slot right here is playing football at Winget right now. He's at Elizabeth City. Um, but you see, he, he's fighting to carry him. Safety's over the top. Now, ideally, if this dude was faster, we would want to burn that guy deep and take the points. But it's man, right? He goes to sit it down in his window. He knows his window's between this linebacker and this linebacker. But as he sits it down, he's on his hip. So he just basically turns it into a dig to get to his window. And again, this is four deep. This is not like dig by number two. This is four deep. So it looks like a completely different play. Get a great clear out. Um, you see our receiver up top was trying to um, break it down for the curl. He realizes at this point he can't get over the top, so he's looking to sit it down. If the guy's got inside leverage, he's going to work back to the sideline. If he's got outside leverage, he's going to work back down the stem to the inside. Um, and, and that's always a good look. Now here's our, tri our tight end look. Um, we're in trips tight, so we got trips right. Um, we're going to be running wide drag here. The tight end's going to be dragging. I'm sure he's going to be wide open, like always. But, again, the same look against East Mac. We're going to catch this guy rolling down, and we're going to be able to um, expose the hash right behind him. But I can't tell you guys how important spacing is. Um, if, one, if there's one thing we do a really good job of, it's spacing. And the thing that's wild about this is he even stems inside of number nine. Like, number nine... His eyes can see him the whole way because he's trying to outside release, but he can't, so he just folds underneath and gets right back on his hash, kind of like a cover two corner, um, and then we just drop it in the window. Again, we love some four deep. Love it, love it, love it, love it out of trips. Again, here we go again. This is the exact same thing by number two. We're pre-snapping. He's outside. He's cheated. Right, so it looks like maybe cover 12. These guys are definitely spying our number three because he's our primary look. Um, but <clears throat> let's look what happens. Looks like a cover four, same exact thing. This is the curl window, but see how this is like a Tampa two mic. You see how deep this mic backer is getting out at 10 yards deep. So he kind of rolls it into a dig because nobody's on his line when he turns. Actually, no, he says it, he bangs at the curl, he rounds it. But, you know, obviously, this guy's inside, so, so he hits the outside hole. If this guy would have flew out quicker, Trevor would have moved inside and, and he would have potentially set it right there behind him. And, again, it's the same play over and over again. Um, and, and we just, you know, we make sure that we get reps with it. Um, again, the two's wide open right here. Uh, one high safety, three knows he's not setting it down. But, again... This guy's like a second high safety. So that's why our two keeps curling it. It's because he can't beat him over the top. He's not fast enough. He's not athletic enough. Um, so he just keeps setting it down underneath. Our three does a great job here. 
of get, get because he releases under Sam, he's going to try to get his hands on, which is going to open up the window for the two. And then boom, three, two, one, three, two, one, processing, bang, bang, bang. Four deep. Again, we're identifying this guy. The ball's on the hash. Safety's inside the hash, if you can see that. They're dropping eight against us because we throw the ball. I mean, look at these backers right here. They are. This is what teams do. This is Audrey Kell. They are not letting anybody get behind them, right? This is like the picket fence defense, and they got somebody robbing right there. So what our three does is he realizes he can't get into this zone, so he just kind of breaks it flat. Find space. We're playing basketball on grass. We're not – don't overcomplicate it. We used to be like – you know, you got to get to – if your depth's 15, you got to get to 15. If your depth's 13, you got to get to 13. Um, and a lot of that's true as far as depth goes. But with this, we're just like, get open. Ask yourself as a receiver, when are you open? And as soon as you're open, turn and face the quarterback, right? Get open now. Um, when am I open? When am I open? And we'll talk about the tennis ball drill here in a minute um, and, and kind of how we teach this. Again, Olympic, another example. I ended up having to actually – we weren't. We were struggling so much in this game, I ended up having to start calling all curls. Um, instead of four verts, instead of calling six, I was calling all curls because these cats right here, um, our quarterback used to play for Olympic. So they all knew him, and they knew that they were not letting him beat them deep. So as you see right here, everybody is looking to wall off. Look at – Look at this backer right here. Um, I mean, right here, I mean, his eyes are completely on number three. He is looking to wall him off. He's not trying to let him get to this hash. But again, because they're trying to keep everything in front, look at how they vacate the curl window up top. And then our quarterback just does a great job making plays. Eagle 4D. Nothing changes. The only thing that's wrong with this is we got trips in the boundary. My running back's way too wide. He needs to be about right here. Um, so the only thing that's going down is the running back's the fifth man in the route, or our four, and he's going to end up running the drag. Everybody else has their responsibilities. So when we come to the line as a quarterback, we're still looking at this guy. If he's cheating wide, then we're thinking pipe shot. If he's squeezing off the pipe, we're thinking one-on-one. -on -one. If it's a cover zero or cover 12 situation, then we're thinking running back on the drag. Um, and right here, our quarterback gets to it. Open cross plant. And really, you see the two's open right here, but there's a little garbage in his window because the, the drag's coming across his face. Um, but again, get the ball to your players and let them be athletes. Again, it's not too complicated. Here we go again. We're an eagle. Now we've got the alignment right. We like to put our four on the line if he's dragging. Um, you know, kind of the same principles as mesh. Um, and then, you know, we're good to go. Really, right here, I really like, because he's as wide as the four, I really like the pipe shot, but it depends on what what this guy here does and whether this guy can carry number two vertical. So let's see what happens. A little breakdown. And again, quarterback just creating, getting the ball out to our running back. It just turns into old school sweep, right? Nothing crazy. Get the ball to your running back in the flats. We just pitched it forward and got some uh, passing yards for it instead of some uh, rushing yards. So no, nothing major, nothing groundbreaking, um, nothing revolutionary. Let's see right here. We got trips. Really, we could probably take the one-on-one -on -one right here because look at this safety. He's in the box. Or not in the box, but he, he's, he's as wide as the tackle. Um, the problem is this corner is kind of cheated deep. So if, if this happens and he's deep, then they're going to be on the same page and they're going to think curl, right? He's going to read single side curl. So if we ever go to the, the one-man surface, the one-man side, it's pre-snap. Everything else, we're going three, two, one to the trips. Three, two, one. All right, break down. And then our three kept working. And really, but, but you see the single-side curl over here, which is where he should have went. Um, at this point, we weren't, re, uh, we weren't running shooting it like we are now. But you see how he's got inside leverage. So my guy knows he's breaking it on a comeback. Boom, right there. Look at this. Look at how much separation. That's a pretty good route. I mean, my guy's still sinking his hips right there. If the ball comes out on time, um, you know, that, that's just a better decision. Um, but, again, we weren't read routing it at this time. Um, we just really transferred to this about two years ago, and this is from three. Same play. Sorry. 
Here we go. We got Trey. Hopefully my outside receiver gets this fixed. Dang, he does not. We should be fired. Oh, okay. Sorry. Timeout. Is there no play? We had some kind of breakup. I'm sorry, guys. Just trying to get you looks at different formations. Trips. Here we go again. Again, this is one of the earlier games. Um, you're going to see it. Again, we got quick because of that cheetah speed, right? We like to go cheetahs so fast. But right here, you got the three trying to curl in between the windows of his two backers. I mean, this backer is just facing our guy. Um, you got one-on-one -on -one out there. And then we got the curl, the comeback route right here. Um, but what you're going to see is this guy right here. And again, we've been a pro at working scramble drill. Dang, that wasn't it. My bad. I'm sorry. I apologize, guys. That, 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 that was the first play we saw. Um, four deep right here. Again, identifying the safety. Can we take our one-on-one -on -one look? That's not our best receiver. So, you know, we don't like this matchup. We're definitely not going one-on-one -on -one here. But we're going three, two. Everybody realizes they can't get over the top, so they set it down. One thing I don't like is my outside, my X down here backpedaling. And then, you know, we just create. But I will say that a lot of teams don't blitz us. If you get really good at replacing the blitz with the throw, teams aren't going to blitz you. We got X drag down here. My man's dragging. Boom. And then which tells our three he can go all the way across if he wants it. Obviously, as you can tell from these films, our pass pro needs some work. I'll make sure that I pass that along to our O-line coach. Um, but we'll kind <clears> of <throat> take a look at one or two more, and then we'll be good. So we ended up hitting it to the come the single sack curl back here. Don't let my quarterback tell you any different. He was definitely trying to throw the three coming across right here, and the ball definitely sailed on him and just perfectly landed in the X's arms. That was not intended, I promise. And then this one was so good. This is the one that we hit to win the game against Olympic. Um, what happened was the play before this, we had just ran um, fade left, and we dropped it, and there was like 20 seconds left to go in the game. You can see everybody's kind of scattered. This play, um, I went fade left again, and my head coach said, Coach, he checked it. Um, this was our first year or second year. This is when he was still signaling, um, and he checked it. And we check four deep. And the reason being is because we wanted to keep stress on this guy right here. We knew we could throw the fade, but if we just called fade, it was going to allow the safety and the corner to double team over the top. With us calling four deep right here, right, this guy right here had to be responsible um, for the three coming across. And I'll just – let me show you one last clip, Coach. Um, before I before I kind of jump into the tennis ball thing, and um, I just want to show it um, to kind of give you a true, um, you know, look at what it what it looks like. I'm going to go to our JV film from 2017, 2018. Oh, sorry. 2018. Is this it? No, this is not it. Let's see. I think I think I got the years. This is how well organized we are at Independence. I think I got the years backwards. I think I posted them on the wrong year, my first year. Um, oh, here we go. Yep, because we play on our bye week. Um, th th this is our last look, um, but I just kind of want to give you a, kind of a, a glimpse of, of, of the beauty of this um, versus cover two. Um, you know, we had a game. God, we had a game against these cats. Um, but so what this is, let me explain to you the situation, all right? This is one untimed down at the end of the game um, to prevent us from going to overtime, right? It's a tie ball game right now. There's no time on the clock. Um, and so, you know, we got one play to make a play. Um, we've got a 6'5 kid down here that we just put in. Um, they're running their cover two. Look, they're, they're, they definitely know we're trying to go away from, um, you know, they, they think the jump ball's coming. This kid hadn't been playing a lot. Um, and so we're in trips, right? And our running back was out this game, so we put an H in um, just to fill in our pass pro. So this is what I call empty funny. 
but we're in trip stride with the H to the left. But the key I want you to work on, look at right here is the pipe, all right? They've been running cover two the whole game. They're stealing it up top. I can't see the guy down here. Um, but coming out of the timeout, you know, we made this substitution. We noticed the safety kept creeping. Um, and so all we have is four deep, and we went with the straight pipe shot um, to win the game, obviously. Um, but I, I just want you guys to see, and you see right here, this guy right here is starting to backpedal. He's starting to get some movement. But our quarterback does a really good job right here. Look, his eyes, he's staring down the single high wide receiver because what it forces that safety to do is safety comes off the hash. And it's just money sauce. I mean, you know, I'm, it, it doesn't get much better than that. Um, so jumping off of that, I'm going to kind of jump into our tennis ball drill real quick um, that I got from um, – that I got from uh, Patrick uh, Taylor, I'm sorry, from East Surrey, um, and, or North Surrey, and then we will um, kind of go from there. Um, all right. We, are we good as the YouTube video showing? Yes, no? Yes, I can see it. Uh, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so what we got going on here, guys, is we're in the gym, and I probably should have diagrammed this out for you, um, and, and you can tell I'm filming it vertically off my phone, but we have a tennis ball in the quarterback's hands right here, his left hand, and then everybody else, we got the defense out there, um, and this is an old school 4-3. This was our base defense, so it's a 4-3. Um, you can do it with trash cans. Really, the, the hardest thing as a coach is getting defender buy-in and getting defenders to, you know, not joke around during this time period because what it is is mainly the only person that's getting reps right here is your quarterback. Um, and I got this again from Patrick Taylor. You know, he made a great point. You know, we can sit here and do, you know, board work and all these things like that. Um, and I guess I should preface this where with he got this from Hal Mummy, right, the, t um, the tennis ball drill from Hal Mummy. But, you know, we can teach quarterbacks on a whiteboard all day, but that's not – how they process it, right? You process it through seeing the holes, seeing people flash in and out of windows. Um, the, the, the issue is, you know, if we teach them in Spanish and then we expect them to play in English, it, it's not going to be a good result, right? So um, we want them to see how they play. And so what we're doing is we're working on our fast process. So our slow process is anything that happens before the snap, that is, you know, is the corner down? Are they in cover two? Are they in cover one? Are they in cover three? Is it one high? Is it two high? Are, are the corners pressed? That's all slow process, right? Once the ball is snapped, it turns into fast process. 95% of the time, when things go wrong in the fast process, when something bad happens post-snap, it's because we missed something pre-snap. Something went bad in the slow process or something went that we didn't see or there was a guy that we didn't notice or something happened that we did not account for or something happened that we didn't think was going to happen. Um, so we missed something. So this is training the fast process. So all we're doing is we're running four deep. Obviously, you can see right here, this is our ox gym. You know, so it's really confined. All we're doing is we're teaching the receivers when to sit space and we're telling the quarterback when to throw. He's not even really open cross plan. He's just taking this tennis ball, and when he sees somebody open, he's throwing it. This has nothing to do with throwing ability. This has nothing to do with mechanics. All this is is cognitive recognition and reading the defense and reading the zones. So we'll sit here and we'll jump them in and out. Um, of defenses, we'll rock and roll, we'll go man, we'll tag our drags. And this is just something that we can do uh, about – the defense is at 25%, but this is something that we can do in the gym, right? Um, this is something that, you know, I don't know what, what your PE standards are, but I'm pretty sure there's a tennis ball somewhere in your PE standards that you may or may not be able to do during class. I'm not sure. I'm not telling you guys what to do, but, you know, we're talking about stealing reps, um, and so I think this is a great way to do it. So what you just had right there is we're in spread. You just saw here, heard the mic backer call motion, motion, motion. We push motion the running back out to put strain on this outside backer right here. And then we threw the curl window right behind. Why? Because the safety stayed deep. I'm going to tell you in the gym, you're going to be throwing a lot of curl routes. You're not going to be bombing it, right? But it's good for the receivers to be able to see the windows. It's good for the quarterback to be able to see the windows. <laughs> Exact same thing, right? We call it three shoot, and then we, we ran our four deep on the outside. Again, we're just trying to read and diagnose. Thanks, 
again, right? We're simulating the snap. Now we've got a center involved, right? And as you can see, the outside, the safety rolls down. Safety rolls down. We want to throw it deep. So we missed right there. Um, and now at this point, we're taking, again, this video is super old. Um, but at this point now, we're going to incorporate a football. Oh, maybe not. One more play. So, okay, you see right there, we got to the drag. I think he could have thrown right here to this guy. But anytime you got the drag coming with four deep, whoever's carrying number um, two is going to be put in conflict. Is he going to continue to carry number two, or is he going to sit here and is he going to redirect and come down and carry the drag? And again, I know I'm the world's worst. I'm sitting here filming feet, and I'm cutting off the top of my receiver's heads, but I really just wanted to get um, the quarterback – you know, going through his visual process. And there you go right there. That, that's the one we missed, right? The backer blitz is heavy. We throw into the blitz. Catch and throw. Bang. Good. We're working our motions. Look off. And again, so what he was doing was he was trying to move that safety um, on this side. Um, to be able to, 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 to be able to take that one on one. Inside out, Brian, nope. And so as you can see, all it is is we're getting reps. Is we're getting reps as far as that goes. Um, and, and teaching them cognitively, you know, what, what to be looking for in the mind. Um, as far as, you know, what it looks like and when we need to deliver the ball and how we need to deliver it on time. So, Coach, that's all I got. Um, is there any questions? I mean, I know, uh, I know there's the hug open for him, but um, is there anything I missed or thought that, you, that I didn't clarify that maybe I could clarify? No, Coach, that was awesome. Um, like I told you guys before when I brought him on, I don't think there's anybody that brings the energy like Coach Van Horn does. So. I, I took my kids one year um, up to work with them um, in the summer, all the way from Swansboro to, I think it was Statesville. And um, it, it's five o'clock in the morning and my kids are just waking up. We get out to the field and Coach Van Horn just chugs a Red Bull and smashes it on his head just to get, get the guys pumped up because it was so early. And those guys have all graduated college now and they still talk about that every time I see them. It's just awesome. So j just a coaching point or two, guys, bring the energy. Your kids feed off of it. And I, I think you 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 do the best job of anybody I've ever been around. So um, just real quick, Coach, just give uh, give these guys, like, maybe your contact information or anything. If they want to shoot you an email or anything like that to ask any questions, just go ahead and share that with them. Absolutely. So my email is B S V B is in Brad S is in Scott V is in Victor um, 0427 at gmail.com. Um, really simple. Um, you can find me on Twitter um, at coach underscore Van Horn V A N H O R N. Um, and then other than that, off those two, you can find me on uh, my Weebly or things like that. But I'm always down to talk ball. I'm always down to get better. Again, I didn't come up with any of this stuff. Um, I have people showing me, um, you know, I've got to work with great people like Coach Townsend um, along the way. And, you know, and it, it, this is a business that you're constantly learning, right? Whether you're learning from Coach Riley or, you know, Coach Atoli or who, whoever it is, um, there, there's tons of good people in this business. And, and if you're willing to learn, there's a lot of people that will help you. So um, I don't want anybody to think that I've got all the answers because I certainly don't. Um, and if you've got anything that you think could help me, um, definitely let me know. I know yesterday, Coach, when we went out to practice, um, Coach Atoli was like, what do you want to do? I was like, well, hold on. I got this idea and uh, you know we got the pop-ups so I was like okay we're gonna put the pop-ups out for mesh and I was like man this field's wet these pop-ups are like 50 pounds we don't have any GAs and we don't want to drive the gator on the field so we just put the defense out there and just had the players stay in stationary but did the exact same thing and went through our mesh drill um, you know in our cover two beater so um, I, I don't have it all figured out I'm constantly learning I, you know coach sent me his video yesterday I checked it out and then there we are less than 24 hours later um, repping it in practice so um, I appreciate you man I appreciate all that you do appreciate you making me a better coach I appreciate you having me on the channel um, and if there's anything I can do you know guys don't hesitate to reach out I'll do whatever I can 
I appreciate that, man. Thanks for coming on. Like I said before, any of you guys out there that, I mean, we all run cover, or we all run four verts, we all run six, and everybody kind of has their own way to do it, but I don't think anybody does it out of trips like you guys do. So, I mean, I learned a ton from that and stuff we'll, we'll absolutely put right in. So, Coach, I appreciate appreciate it. You guys uh, contact me. Um, if you want to uh, have any questions, just comment below or things like that. And uh, we're always here for you to help and, uh, and here to learn as well. So, appreciate you, Coach. Thanks for, having, thanks for coming on. Yes, sir. No problem. Thank you, Coach. Best luck this season. You too.